Hi, welcome back to Holistic Developer. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to get straight forward to the topic of today's video, which is how many hours do I spend programming in a week? Before I start with that, I want to bring this following information to your attention that even though I'm sharing how many hours I spend this week, this week is just a random week. It doesn't represent my normal, let's say. Every week is different. Every single day is different. One day might be spent more coding. Another day might be spent more hours on planning. Other day might be thinking of researching something, brainstorming and so on. So every single day is unique and every single week is also unique. So this is just a random representation. Other weeks might be less hours or more hours, but that being said, I just want you to know that this is just a random, is not a template or a rule, let's say. And <laughs> that being said, let's get started and look into how many hours did I spend coding each and single day in a week. Before <laughs> I start with that, I have everything noted here because I want to give you exact information. Um, and in order to know exactly how much time did I spend coding, I used uh, an extension. I think it's called Walker Time, which I love it. I recently discovered it. And it's really, really easy and convenient. It's like install it, install the extension in your developing tool. In my case, it's Visual Studio Code. And it tracks all the time you're spending coding. It actually tracks also what kind of code you're writing, meaning what con what programming language are you using. So in my case, for this week, I used JavaScript most of the time. I had HTML there. I had CSS. I had Pug. I had also, uh, I've written something in JSON. I had also some markdown and so on. So it keeps track of what are you actually doing. And it's seemingly you don't even notice that. And I have the goal to spend at least three hours a day coding. So I get notifications from Walker Time every day how good I am on that goal. So let's look. We will begin with Sunday. So this past Sunday, I programmed three hours and seven minutes. And that was writing in JavaScript. I was handling something for the project on the back end. And I also was, I've written something in Pug. I want to preface this that this is the octave hours of writing code that doesn't take, okay, how much time I spend on kind of writing down something on paper, doing like UML diagrams and so on, right? So this is just the active time. And in this particular week, I worked with in a team of three people, including me. So there were also times where I will be looking over somebody else's code or I'll do a code review or something like that. So the time or the hours that I am mentioning, those are the actual hours I spend on my terminal writing code. Okay, so that was Sunday. Monday, I spent two hours and 52 minutes and that the majority of time was writing JavaScript and the back end and I also did some CSS. However, Monday in a certain level was a nightmare. And let me elaborate on that. What happened, it was that we are using Git as our source control or yeah, it's our repository. And somehow two of our team members, including me, we had the code kind of synced, everything was okay. For whatever reason, our third team member was missing the latest code that we committed and that didn't make sense. We did the latest, um, we pulled, we did fetch, we did so many things, nothing was fixing it. So we reached out to our instructor, long story short, with different commits, different kind of moving the head back, undoing the last commits and so on, we got into a situation where we screwed up our master branch and we had lost everything that we worked for a week. And that was pretty bad. So I spent a lot of time trying to 
bring everything back, bring back everything that we <laughs> delivered or not delivered, what we developed for about a week. Um, that week was a lot of planning, but also it had a lot of set up as well. We set up the database, we set up everything. So it was kind of a kind of a nightmarish start to lose your code and all that stuff. So the fact that it tells that I, I spent almost three hours coding, everything else was spent on bringing back or recovering the code that we lost with our GitHub uh, situation. And practically every day I start coding around 7.30, something like that. And throughout the day I'll have a break. And in the evening, I might have also a little bit of a break and I'll come back to code again. So I will show a little representation of the hours breaking down somewhere here on the page. So yeah, it even looks like Monday I spent only three hours coding. It was a really busy day and it was really stressful. Moving on to Tuesday. Tuesday, I spent coding five hours and 33 minutes. Again, those are the active hours. I didn't just spend only five and a half hours. I, that day I was actually coding probably for 10 hours. And coding means that I was working, I was paired with somebody, I was um, walking over uh, what they have done, reviewing and also looking at our documentation, updating the documentation according to the changes that we've done, keeping track, managing the board of the project and so on. So actively I spent five hours and 33 minutes using or writing in JavaScript and mostly I was doing the front end um, of the website and also looks like I was doing some pug templating there. Moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday, it looks like I spent three hours, 56 minutes only on coding. And again, it was JavaScript and pug. I cannot believe that it was only four hours that day. Again, it was a super busy day. So apparently I was probably pair programming with somebody and we were using the teammates terminal. So I doesn't show actually the active time that I programmed. Moving on to Thursday. Thursday, it shows that I programmed for nine hours, 46 minutes. And that again was JavaScript. It was the front end. It was Pug and CSS. Also I had JSON. I had HTML and stuff like that, but they were really small percentages. So that's why I don't mention them. Moving on to Friday. Friday, I spent coding six hours and 44 minutes. And I remember that if I'm not mistaken, I worked until almost 10 at night or something like that. And um, I think I felt the most productive on Friday. Um, everything was happening so fast because it was super easy to do everything once we kind of had our skeleton in place, everything was working as desired. So on Friday, it was that we were kind of adding, adding the muscles <laughs> to the skeleton and making it uh, more interesting and fun. So, and today is Saturday. I haven't coded to this moment yet, but the day is still young. So maybe I will do some coding later in the day, or maybe I'll take a breathing day and do something else because I'm human and I need my brain to, to relax as well. So looking at how many hours I coded starting with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I gathered total 32 hours and 16 minutes of acting coding on my terminal. That being said, um, again, that's not a representation. Oh, I cannot talk. That's not a representation over every single week or over every single day. One week I might be using one programming language, the other day it will be a different programming language. Um, some languages are more comfortable and doesn't take so, like kind of, it doesn't have that steep uh, learning curve that I need to do and stuff like that. So yeah, um, primarily what I used for this, it was Visual Studio Code. I programmed Visual Studio Code and everything was source control to GitHub. Again, this hours were tracked by this extension and by no means I'm affiliated or paid by it or doing any commercial or anything like that. This is my honest opinion or my thing that I'm using, the extension that I'm using. And I really was curious to see what is actually that I'm spending 
on coding. And I will show you a breakdown of the week on what I worked on. It actually shows you hour by hour, every single minute, what you spent on. And it's great to have an extension like that because in reality, one thing when you're planning a project, you say, oh, I think it will take me three hours to do that. And then you can see in reality at the end of the day or end of the project, which files or what part of the project took you the most, what was the most challenging. And doing that time after time, time after time, kind of doing a retrospective will help you estimate better next time when you work on the project to determine how much time do you need for one project or one aspect of the project, one feature of the project versus the other, knowing which classes do you need, which modules do you need, what do you need to import, what do you need to export, what is the most consuming, is the back end that is taking the most time, is it the front end that is taking most time, or is it the styling that takes you the most time? Because you might think the styling is so easy, oh, adding fonts and maybe some little animation or something like that, that's easy. Maybe not, maybe that takes you the most time because it's, so detail oriented or maybe not it might be different for every single person but for me looking back at the week of working on the project it's kind of amazing to see where the time went and i'm sure that, that that's something that will help me do better next time when i do have to do some project work again so hopefully you found this video interesting and you found something curious. And if you like, you can give it a try to this extension. It's free. I think they have a paid version. I'm not using the paid version, but you can find it in the Visual Studio Code extensions. And it's called Walk a Time. And I can see it in the browser, everything that I've done. That being said, if you find this video interesting and you would like to share it with somebody that might enjoy it feel free to do that please that way we will get more people into this channel and that will be a great growing <laughs> exercise for us and i'm always awkward at saying <laughs> share or like or something like that but yeah um, just being honest if you liked it feel free to like it um, if you'd like to share it with somebody, that will mean a lot to me, so feel free to do that. And make sure to subscribe you ha if you haven't subscribed yet. That way you will be notified on the next videos that are coming up. Next video that I'm working on is an interesting video that it took me a while to work on. And it's I want to answer the question, what programming language, language should you learn um, next? So if you want to watch that video and be informed when it's dropped out, make sure to subscribe and make sure that you have the notification bell turned on. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Thank you for your support. Stay sharp and stay smart and enjoy your time. Bye bye until next time.